Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another video on History of I podcast. And today I'm joined by Professor Jody Magnus. Today's topic is going to be based upon her course, Archaeology in the Time of Jesus. I'll have the link to the course and the Five Cart uh, Bart Ehrman Professional Services Affiliation, History Valley Affi Affiliation link in the description below. So welcome back to History of I podcast, Professor Magnus. Hi, thanks for having me back. Of course, thank you. Um, can you tell us a bit about this course. What is this course about? Yeah, so um, this was Bart's idea. As you may know, Bart's my colleague at UNC Chapel Hill. And uh, what he wanted me to do was to sort of um, propose a series of lectures on what archaeology tells us about Jesus and the time of Jesus. Uh, and so together, we put together four courses, um, the courses or four lectures, rather, the um, lectures are going to be the first one's Jesus in Galilee. The second one is Qumran and the Dead Sea Scrolls. The third one is J Jesus in Jerusalem. And the fourth one is the deaths and burials of Jesus and James. So kind of like a, a sort of a sequence. And what does archaeology tell us about the time that Jesus lived? Right. That's the big question, right? So um, what I always like to explain to people is that uh, we don't have any archaeological artifacts that we can associate with Jesus as an individual. So, for example, we don't have the Holy Grail, <laughs> right? Uh, actually, we might, but we wouldn't know. Uh, so, you know, hey, who knows? Maybe the cup out of which Jesus drank at the Last Supper has been found in an excavation. But um, unless you find a cup that actually is inscribed with an authentic ancient inscription that says, this is the Holy Grail, you know, this is the cup out of which Jesus drank, uh, we wouldn't know. And this isn't actually surprising. It's because, uh, um, generally speaking, the only type of individuals who left identifiable remains in the archaeological record are members of the elite, the upper classes. So the very rich and famous and wealthy who built monuments that are associated with their names or left big dedicatory inscriptions that have their names on them. And Jesus was not a member of the elite class. So it's actually not surprising. Um, and therefore, the sort of search for um, artifacts that are associated directly with Jesus is, you know, pretty much um, never going to really amount to anything. Uh, and, and, and that's what, not what archaeologists do anyway. But that said, uh, what archaeology does provide is a lot of information about the world of Jesus and about his context. So um, we can reconstruct with a pretty high degree of accuracy um, the kinds of villages, Jewish villages, in the time of Jesus, what, what they would have looked like, what you know, daily life would have been, look, been like, what houses look like. Uh, we can reconstruct with really a lot of accuracy um, the city of Jerusalem in the time of Jesus, um, the Temple Mount uh, that Jesus would have visited. So, and, and in my last lecture, I will cover the deaths and burials of Jesus and James, so we know how um, Jews in this period disposed of their dead. So all of this sort of provides context for understanding the gospel accounts, both the gospel accounts that sort of refer um, sometimes indirectly to the world of Jesus, but also understanding, you know, uh, Jesus's outlook, right? What he might have been talking about when, when he referred to something. So that's really the value of archaeology. And what else can it tell us? Because um, some people might say that, man, we really have very little information about Jesus. And I know, and I know that several scholars uh, dismiss a, a lot of what the Gospels say about, about Jesus. So what what can we know? What little can we know um, through the archaeology? What how does it, in general, help us understand Jesus better? Um, right. So I mean, so for example, uh, um. <laughs> So uh, one of the one I don't want to like give away some of the content of the lectures, but but one of the things I'll be talking about is um, the episode of Jesus overturning the tables of the money changers um, in the temple, and uh, you know when people most people when they hear or read that episode today think that it reflects Jesus's opposition to commercial activity in the temple, and uh, what I will explain in my in my lecture is that in fact, it has nothing to do with that at all. And in order to understand what that episode originally meant, um, you have to understand what was going on in the temple in the time of Jesus. So 
that's just like one example, right? Uh, where I think um, understanding that both the historical and the archeological context is valuable for um, understanding accurately what the gospel accounts uh, tell us. And what about Jesus in Jerusalem? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Right, so um, a, most of my lecture is going to focus on the area of the Temple Mount and the area around the Temple Mount, uh, because of course those figure prominently in, um, in the gospel accounts uh, of Jesus' final days. Um, and I, I think the, that one of the important things to understand about the, the Temple and Temple Mount is that we're really talking about a huge complex, a big open esplanade uh, that we call the Temple Mount, uh, which had the actual temple building in the middle of it. And um, it's important to understand that distinction because in the gospel accounts, when you read them, um, it's not always clear, at least in, in English translation, whether what is being referred to is the whole esplanade or specifically the temple building. And, and that can make a big difference in, in understanding, um, again, what the gospel accounts are talking about. And, and so another example of, of something that will come up in my lecture is the sort of uh, the physical evidence that we have for distinguishing between the area of the temple and the rest of the Temple Mount and who was allowed into those distinct areas. And what about the Dead Sea Scrolls? What what can they help? What can, what do they tell us? And how does it shed light about the Jesus movement? Right. So, um, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Spoiler alert: the, the Dead Sea Scrolls actually have nothing to do directly with Jesus, but I am but I am going to talk about them for a couple of reasons. And and one reason is that um, a lot of people think that they do have something to do with Jesus, and that actually goes back to the initial discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, where they were studied by um, Christian scholars from mostly Western Europe and North America, whose interest was, in fact, in what do the scrolls tell us about Jesus. Uh, but, but really, the scrolls have nothing directly to do with Jesus. They're associated with um, a Jewish sect that uh, Jesus uh, was not affiliated with. But uh, the value of the Dead Sea Scrolls is that they shed light more broadly on Judaism in the time of Jesus. And it's important to remember that in this period, we're talking first century BC, first century AD, that uh, you had lots of different Jewish groups that are sometimes called sects or, or movements um, among the population. And they're all Jewish, including Jesus's movement. They're all Jewish. They all uh, accept the importance of living according to biblical Jewish law but they differed in their, sometimes in their interpretation and practice of specific points of law. And so if you take any two of these groups, they will have some points where they overlap, where they agreed, and some points where they differed from each other. And so the scrolls help fill in some of the gaps in our knowledge of the, the points of similarity, but also really important, the differences between these groups. And so when we look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I will talk about this, um, it's important to understand what what light they might shed indirectly. So by way of comparison with what we know about Jesus and his movement. And in my closing question, what what will the course um, shed light on the most? Or let me rephrase it. Um, what are the few points that that people will learn from the course that you would like to summarize about giving too much away? Of course. Wow, <laughs> that's a hard question because that's a big question. Um, I'm not sure actually that I, I hope this will come across in the course, but but that is that, you know, and I, I always like to try and explain this to people, right? Archaeology is is a science. It's a scientific discipline. Um, and therefore it provides, as a science, it provides really important information, new information, because it's information that we dig up. It's not information that's been passed down over the course of generations. But also, like sciences, it's um subject to interpretation. And that's why archaeologists disagree with each other. Uh, it's because uh, it's not objective. Science, by the way, is not objective. Science also is open to interpretation. So uh, other sciences. So um, so I hope what people will will understand is that archaeology is a scientific discipline that is equipped to answer certain types of questions that we have about the past but it is not equipped to answer all of the kinds of questions that we have about the past. So it's important when 
using archaeology to study the past to understand what its limitations are and to understand that you have to ask the right questions of the archaeological evidence. Um, so I hope that will that will come across, even though that's not necessarily something I'll say in that way in the lectures. Well, thank you for joining me today, Jody Madness. Thanks for having me back. Hello, viewers. Thanks for watching this video from the History Valley YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if any of you wish to further support this channel, please consider checking out this channel's Patreon page and becoming a patron. And or donate through PayPal or through Super Chat during your live stream. Thank you.